They're getting a lot friendlier. There's a couple that I can distinguish from the others, like that one, which is kind of dusty. And then there's another one somewhere in there that's really lighter colored. So they're, they're coming around. Never thought I'd have to tame chickens. We're moving up. These two were nice and warm this morning. These four are from yesterday, these four are from the day before. We're getting there. Good job, girls. These are just temporary containers. I keep them in until we wash them. And then we put them in our um, special containers, which I don't think I have any. I think they're all at Dad's. So the last couple nights, it's been down in the 20s. And the first night, I put a tarp over everything, and that was a failure. So last night, I just kind of said, well, they're supposed to be cold hardy crops. We'll see what happens. There definitely was some frost. We'll see if they'll be okay. Just kind of dusting them off. But I did put some of this leaf mulch down last night to, to act as a mulch for the garden in general, but to maybe give them a little bit of extra cover. See, there's more. We'll see. I'm a little concerned, but if I lose peas, it's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, that doesn't feel very good. It feels wilty, but I might rebound. Just trying to dust off some of the frost. These guys almost look better. These are growing better. I'm starting to like this variety more. I think it's the little marble pea. The broccoli, granted, it's been in the sun more because the way the sun is coming up, it doesn't, uh, it's not quite as crisp feeling, but actually this purple broccoli might be a little more delicate. But so far, it's still alive. We got a couple more nights in the lower temperatures. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, because I probably should do something. I probably shouldn't just risk it, huh? Asparagus is still alive. Planted this from seed last year. And it's still looking okay. I'm surprised, kind of, but it's a cooler crop. Oh, that end came off. I probably squished it by accident. I wonder if you can eat it raw. Yeah, you can. Not too bad. I've been putting the lettuce flats and the broccoli outside during the day, but it's still pretty chilly and I got some errands to run, so I'm just gonna leave them in here for now. So far, it looks like everything's okay. It is warmer in the greenhouse just because of the sun coming in, but as you can see, I have a real mess. There's the sunflowers up there. Hopefully they're okay next to the window, but they didn't get any direct frost. They would just have really cold. All right, so one thing I've been asking myself and been thinking about doing a video about, but even though I'm not quite there yet, I'm gonna do it anyway today. Um, my question is, with the income I'm getting, how do I know the best place to reinvest that income? In yesterday's video, I mentioned that we are funding the farm business, the eggs, the garden, everything with our personal budget. But now that I've been getting some farm income from selling plants and eventually selling eggs, I'm trying to figure out the best way to reinvest that money. Either not just through feed because that's a given cost I have to do that but what um, extra infrastructure might help us should I invest plant money into the chickens by doing some poultry netting because their little run is almost out of grass already so I've been trying to think of different things to that I should invest reinvest my farm income with into so one of those things is this plant protecting blanket um those super cold temperatures 
the last two nights and then we're gonna have one or two more nights had me go to the local hardware store and purchase this it's for um, frost protection it says it provides six to eight degrees of frost protection um, I do know that after my experience last year with broccoli and the worms for lack of a better term they were actually butterfly larva um, those little moth thing larva all over our broccoli I knew I needed to get some kind of row cover but since we are like in the middle of the cold snap I knew the hardware had store had one of these and I went and they still had it so that was one thing I invested in it's 10 feet by 12 feet which may not um fit over everything but it's better than nothing i can supplement with something else and hopefully that'll work a little better than the tarp it is something that the rain can go through so i don't have to change it out all the time i'm hoping i can leave it on the broccoli until it matures and the moths go away and i don't have to worry about that because that was really gross um so that was one thing with that i went ahead and purchased the staples to staple it into the ground it's not like a stapler like you would think for paper but these just go in the cloth in the ground and I probably could have used wire hangers now that I'm thinking of it but I'll either use these or take the them back and use wire hangers we'll see how it works um, these I don't have to cut and bend so it's worth five dollars of my time um, this is something I got to use to fix the greenhouse door. I managed to rip it off a few days ago and my dad and I fixed it, but it's not fixed good enough. So we're going to see if I can fix it. I don't even know how to explain these to tell you what they are, but that's another investment back into the greenhouse. And the last thing I purchased was, um, this is my used can, but this is chalkboard paint. And it's really pretty cool. It actually does work like chalkboard. But I started spray painting metal, like just scrap metal I found with some chalkboard paint and using as little chalkboards. And I found a bigger sheet of metal that I'm going to use as a farm sign. Because I've had, I plan to, to make it for different um, events like a farmer's market or a craft show if I'm going to one of those. But with people picking up plants and stuff they get here and they don't really know where to go I can make the sign and I still gotta buy some lumber for it but I can at least get the sign started and chalkboard means that I can change it I don't have to continually write a new sign or something it will wash off in the rain but I'm thinking that there's some chalk markers that you can get now that are more waterproof or water resistant and they, the reason why I think I made sure I found metal is because they're for non-porous surfaces. So like wood is a porous surface, so it might not come off as well. Whereas the metal, it should come off once I spray it with this chalkboard paint. So if that's a project you're interested in following along with, I might be doing a video about it. I just need to find the lumber. So that's some ways that I've reinvested my money. Most I can't remember if this was like 15 bucks. This might not be exactly what I want in terms of protecting the broccoli, but it's what I need right now and I have access to it right now because we're going to get another cold snap tonight. It's actually been pretty cold and windy today. I'm going to probably go out and cover it, cover the plants um, soon. There's also chances of snow and as much as I want to be lazy about it, I can't. I planted this stuff, I've worked this hard, and I need to take care of the plants better than what I have the last couple nights. So that's how I'm reinvesting some of the money. But other ways I'm trying to figure out to reinvest, I'd be interested in your opinion. What are some of the best investments? Tom thinks he wants to come up here. He's probably gonna claw me on the way. You want up here? There we go. There's Tom. Um, the poultry netting. I'd like to do, I debated about letting the girls out free range last night, but, um, we don't know if they'll make it back to their coop. And we cannot let Raisin out when the chickens are loose because she would just, she'd chase them and eat them and it would be a disaster. And that's just the way she is and how we'll have to compensate. 
but I've thought about poultry netting before. Um, I've heard really good things about it. It is kind of expensive, but I'm sure it's worth it. It's just not an expense that I can take at this point. So that's one thing. Um, I'm also hearing that more garden centers are closing and that is really scary to me. If I wasn't so involved with our garden, I wouldn't be as worried, but there are a lot of people that are starting to look for their seeds and plants and, and everything this year. And I don't know if it's affecting everywhere because I'm seeing it's a federal mandate and to what extent. I don't know if it's just certain parts of the garden center or if it's everything, seeds, pots, potting soil, I don't know. And um, I'm trying to find more information on that. So it's a little scary. Once again, I'm just gonna hide, on, hide out here, I think, and just keep chugging away, hoping that I can miraculously find more room because my greenhouse is so full. Um, but if you have suggestions on ways to reinvest your farm money, I would love to hear it. Part of it could be considered paying myself back for past expenses, but right now I'm okay with reinvesting that income in garden or chickens or something similarly farm related. Um, it's not a great chunk of money, but it's better than the zero dollars I had to work with before. So, um, I'd be interested to know in how you've reinvested your money, if you have a suggestion for how we should invest. Not necessarily going to take the suggestion, but I'd like to hear it anyway. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that's it for that part. In my head, I had a whole lot more things to go over, but um, I've lost track, especially since Tom's here. But this is the receipt. Um, yesterday I was talking about finances and bills. I just stick this in a jar and then come next week when I do my weekly finances, I'll pull it out and I'll add it. Um, I'll probably write it down in my bullet journal today as an expense just so it's there, kind of a double check and you're sitting on my bullet journal anyway so it's not that out of my way to add it to my journal. Um, so I hope everybody's being safe. I'll see if I can bring you along with me when I put out the um, the cover, but it's still pretty windy and it's snowing, so you might miss out a little bit. We'll see. But consider subscribing. There should be a button, I think, down, somewhere down towards Tom's head. Um, liking, commenting helps our channel. Check us out at jctrustichomestead.com. We have several plants that are not quite ready for new homes, but I need room so if you have plans that you're interested in I can send you the link to the blog post where I list our garden roster of all the plants that I'm planting um, some are strictly for our use and others will be for sale plants so um, and don't forget to support your local nurseries even if they're not open right now I don't know if they're able to be open by appointment or not that might be a lot that I don't know about. I don't know how that's working for them, but um, consider contacting your local nurseries. We have a couple within maybe a half hour, 40 minutes of where we are. So, all right, Tom, time to get back to work.
Well, these tent stakes were pretty slick. I started putting them in the ground and realizing a lot of people use a rubber mallet to put them in. But mine just, our ground is so soft right now, mine just slid right in. The only thing that I tried to make sure of, if the fabric was coming down like this, I put the stake in at a little bit of an angle so that it, it wasn't just coming straight out of the ground, especially if a wind caught that. I don't know if you saw me trying to do the sides, that's why I had to remove the center fence stakes holding up the chicken wire because I wanted to secure those ends so it didn't rip the fabric as bad. It is a little flimsy of a fabric, but I think in the right context, it will work well. So once these cold snaps are over, I'll probably just resituate it over the broccoli section, which is where the fence is. And actually, if I did that, I could probably remove the fence and re-fence again the peas because I fenced the peas for a trellis and then realized I didn't have enough chicken wire to go around the broccoli. And last year we had Attack of the Bunnies eating the broccoli, so that's why the broccoli is fenced. But if I put that fabric over to get them bigger, um, I could probably re trellis the peas again. So one of these times I'll learn not to do triple the work. We'll see when. And I could have probably used a wire hanger but these were worth, these were like, I think five, six bucks for 20 stakes. So that was worth it right now to me for the, that, those wire hangers are kind of crazy strong. So, um, yeah, haven't tried the grips yet. I may try to make Colton help me with that just because it is a door and screwing a door onto hinges is not always easy especially if you're by yourself and it's windy so that's it for now i ended up actually getting a nap in this afternoon i'm kind of ashamed of that i just fell asleep so i got a lot more work to get done because i didn't get it done while i was taking a nap um once again consider subscribing uh let me know how you guys like to reinvest your income when you're starting up and hope you all are doing well staying healthy We'll catch you tomorrow.